Hello and welcome to Box Office Receipts. I'm your host, Donald Callahan, and oh boy, do we got stuff to talk about. Records were broken, Paramount calls it quits on 2021, uh, Sony is running in circles, and a bunch of other news dropped right as I recorded this. As always, let's talk about those numbers first. Since it was Labor Day weekend, the domestic numbers will be for the four-day format to include Monday. I thought Shang-Chi would do around 65 to 70 million for the four-day. I was dead wrong, but in a good way. The latest Marvel Studios film opened to $94 million. In second place was Candyman with 12.8 million for a total of 41.3 million. In third place was Free Guy with 11.2 million for a total of 94.3 million. Fourth place was Paw Patrol with 5.1 million for a total of 31.5 million. Lastly, in fifth place was Jungle Cruise with 5.2 million for a total of 106.9 million. So, Shang-Chi killed it, not only with a better than expected opening, but also broke the Labor Day weekend record. Though that was always going to happen, the record has been for Halloween 2, the Rob Zombie version, at around 30 million. Now, I think even though the opening weekend numbers are close, this did a lot better than Black Widow for its opening weekend. First, word of mouth seems to be a lot stronger here. I was following it throughout the weekend, and the estimates just kept getting higher and higher. Meanwhile, for Black Widow, it kept getting lower. Now, you can make the point that it was also on Premier Access, and that affected the numbers, and you would be right. But I would also counterpoint to balance that out, that when it was released in July, the country was in a much better situation with COVID compared to now. I think what this weekend shows is that, again, if there is a film everybody wants to see, the pandemic becomes a secondary concern. Now, since it is a theatrical-only release, the legs on this should be good, and right now should finish with at least 200 million domestic, which would be the first film to do so since Bad Boys for Life over a year and a half ago. What does this mean, though, for releases for the rest of the year? I'll go over that after I finish numbers, because one studio is already making a move. Taking a look at China, Free Guy stayed in first place for the second weekend in a row with 18.3 million for a total of 56.6 million. The Tomorrow War premiered in second place with 8.1 million. Third place was Raging Fire with 6.1 million for a total of 176 million. In fourth place was Luca with 1.3 million for a total of 12.8 million. And lastly, in fifth place was Zero to Hero, which had an odd placement as it was released on a Saturday, not on a Friday. Anyway, this was a quiet weekend for the Chinese box office as a whole. Free Guy is still doing well, and for the Tomorrow War, the quiet opening was expected. As for Hollywood movies going forward, Shang-Chi and Jungle Cruise still do not have release dates, and at this point, I doubt Black Widow will get one. I would say keep an eye out over the next few weeks to see if Venom gets a release date. Sony will be gunning for that hard. Looking at international numbers, Shang-Chi opened in other markets this weekend and made 56.2 million for a worldwide opening weekend of 139.7 million. It should be noted that this total is basically everywhere but Asia. China does not have a release date for it yet, and a lot of South Asia is in the middle of a lockdown like Vietnam. Also, most of Australia as well. Free Guy made another 25.3 million for a total of 239.2 million worldwide. Paw Patrol made 7.1 million and is now at 80.5 million worldwide. Candyman still seems to be doing only great domestically, with it only making 2.1 million for a worldwide total of 50 million worldwide. Warner Brothers' newest horror movie, Malignant, got a head start in a few markets, making 2.4 million. It will be premiering domestically this upcoming weekend. Speaking of Warner Brothers, The Suicide Squad is at 162.5 million worldwide, and Reminiscence is at <clears throat> uh, 13.5 million dollars. All right, so let's talk about what the studios are doing. In a direct response to the strong numbers for Shang-Chi, Sony has once again decided to move Venom Let There Be Carnage, and is moving it back up by two weeks, and will now premiere October 1st. And to lock in the date for good, at least domestically, Pre-sales for tickets start later this week. I get it, Sony really needs Venom to be a hit, but at this point, it's hilarious how much the movie is bouncing back and forth on release dates. This still gives Shang-Chi basically the entire month of September to itself, which will only help it. As for Sony, they still have a hard fight throughout October. When Venom comes out, it'll only have one week to itself, as the following weekend, No Time to Die will come out, then Halloween Kills, the following weekend, and then after that, Dune. So back-to-back-to-back movies. Oh, and then two weeks after... Uh, Dune Eternals comes out. Still, don't get me wrong, this is the right move for Sony. In fact, it should have never left its late September slot. 
and give Venom two weeks, but it is what it is. Another studio making moves in pa- is Paramount, and they have officially packed up and called it for 2021, as they will now wait for 2022. With this, Top Gun Maverick moves from November to May 27th, 2022. Because of that push, Mission Impossible 7 has been moved from May 2022 to September 30th, 2022. Also, Jackass Forever, one of the movies set to come out in October, will now come out next February. I guess what I take from this is even if the domestic box office is getting better, Paramount is looking to have everywhere open to get the best shot possible. Right now, a lot of Asia is in some kind of lockdown or restrictions, and come November, parts of Europe might be as well. The only move I do not get is Jackass. If they are worried about a possible winter spike, you might as well release it in October and cash in now, because in February, if one did happen, we would be on the way out of it, which means the box office might be similar to this past spring than summer. But hey, if they want to take the risk, go ahead. Sony made another move in reaction to this news as well, and that was to move Ghostbusters Afterlife back just a bit. It will now take over Top Gun's spot of November 19th, so a one-week delay, which gives it some breathing room from Eternals, so smart move from them there. Also, another movie release date change that I failed to mention a few weeks ago, Disney has moved up the Kingsman back to this year, and will now come out December 22nd. Why? Don't know, really. I mean... For them, it would be a different audience compared to West Side Story. I guess they want to keep it away from Death on the Nile next February, but it is now going up against The Matrix Resurrections, so it's not really a better spot. Honestly, even if it gets great reviews, I do not see how this movie makes more than $50 domestic, unless Disney spends a good amount of money advertising it, as people have forgotten this movie exists. Talking about new movies, Disney is gearing up for their next one based on a ride, though it has already been done before, and that is a remake of Haunted Mansion. From The Hollywood Reporter, they are saying that Owen Wilson has joined the cast, and Deadline is saying Rosario Dawson has joined as well. They are joined by Tiffany Haddish and Lakeith Stanfield, who joined earlier. The film actually begins production soon, with filming starting next month. So looking at the lineup of new movies based on rides, Jungle Cruise will count as the first one, Haunted Mansion is next, then Jungle Cruise 2, and maybe Tower of Terror. I'm curious if Disney will try to lay a roadmap out for these movies like they kind of did with these live action remakes. If you go to Cinemark to watch films, you may be interested in this as they are now adding a new tier to the movie club, Movie Club Platinum. This new tier will allow customers to get 25% off concessions as well as the ability to buy more tickets at member price. So obviously it's more similar to AMC Stubbs and not the A-list subscription, but if you go there a lot, it might be worth signing up. So for VOD Premium, we got an interesting story to kick it off with, and that is talking about Chinese streaming. The Hollywood Reporter got an exclusive on this, and that is Warner Brothers' latest horror movie, Malignant, which comes out this weekend domestically, will also be premiering the same day in China, but on multiple streaming platforms and not a theatrical release. How did that happen? Well, Warner Brothers co-produced the film with a Chinese studio called Starlight Media, and they were able to negotiate the deals. In China, Starlight worked with a digital distributor, Jetson Haishi to work out the deals with the platforms. So where will it premiere in China? Well, the platforms actually include a mix of streaming and telecoms, including China Mobile, China Unicorn, China Telecom, China Broadcasting Network, Huawei, and IQIYI. The film was also slightly edited to be allowed it to be shown in China as well. This is definitely an interesting development, and I actually kind of feel bad for people in China. I think part of the reason this deal was done was because the movie is going to have toxic word of mouth, so they need to cash in as much as they can. As of recording this on Thursday, the day before it comes out, not a single review is available. That's not good. But this does possibly set a precedent to release more Hollywood films in China, especially if it gets around the limit currently in place. I believe it's either 35 or 50 Hollywood films can be approved each year by the government. If being approved, but goes to streaming, gets around that limit, then I think Hollywood should consider getting in on that. Right now, only Chinese streaming services can exist. That's why Netflix and Disney Plus are not there. Also, if China will be cracking down a bit on Hollywood movies and theaters, then streaming would be a good alternative. Get the money up front, and then you don't have to worry about piracy as much. As just for horror movies in general, it is kind of rare for a studio to get an approval for one, but I guess that might be one of the perks of producing with a Chinese studio. The Hollywood Reporter has another exclusive, and that is Paramount Plus bought a movie. Yep, they bought the domestic rights to Orphan First Kill. It is from E1, and it is a sequel to a movie called Orphan from 2009. No word on how much it cost, and it will be a little bit before it comes out. It is currently in post-production. 
Clearly, this is not a big get for them, but I will say it's smart to try and buy some films to boost their library. Also, with the Paramount films delayed to next year, they need to look at how to get more content in the meantime. Some quick Netflix news, not really news, but trailers. They released the first trailers for the biggest films for the rest of the year. First one was Red Notice, their big blockbuster with Dwayne Johnson, Gal Gadot, and Ryan, John- Ryan Reynolds. The second one is Don't Look Up, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. Personally, I'm looking to that one more than Red Notice, because while everyone in that film are acting like there are other characters from other films. HBO Max has locked in the date for their launch in a few European countries next month. Variety has the exclusive on this on October 26th. It will launch in Spain, Sweden, Norway, Finland, Andorra, and Denmark. Variety also notes two things. First, once those European launches happen, HBO Max will be available in 60 countries. And like we knew before, because of the already made deals between HBO and local cable companies, there are currently no plans to release HBO Max in the UK or in Germany anytime soon. For SDX, it looks like they have changed their plans regarding their movie The Sun, which stars James McAvoy and Claire Foy. Friday has the exclusive on this, and first it was set to premiere on Peacock next week, which it still is. However, after three months, it will leave to go to the Roku channel. For SDX, since there is no domestic theatrical release, they are doing this to maximize profits, clearly, which I get. But I wonder how this happened behind closed doors. Like, was the contract with Peacock signed and they wanted to change it? And if so, how are they compensated? I know we won't get answers for it. Just got me curious how it all worked out. Also, a quick note, the movie will be available on the free tier on Peacock. No paying subscription required. Alright, final story of the podcast, which came in like a wrecking ball. Halloween Kills will be moved to a hybrid release. Yep, the latest Halloween movie will follow the same release as Boss Baby Family Business by releasing theaters and on Peacock Premium same day. As for why the change, well, no one from NBC Universal or Comcast gave a clear reason as to why. My personal thinking for this is partially because of the mixed reviews the movie is getting. It premiered at the Venice Film Festival and has not had a good time, with it hovering around 50% on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, I'm not saying they rushed this move, but I think they had this release strategy in mind as a backup just in case. From what we have here seen this summer is people go to a movie if they really want to see it or it's great reviews. Suicide Squad is the exception to this rule. With weak reviews and strong competition from other films, the choice seems to have been made to strengthen Peacock even more, which is the smart thing to do. But like the boss baby, how are theaters going to react to this? Unless there is a hidden clause they keep using. The deal was that it can be moved to VOD after 17 days. So I take it, it was written that the streaming releases do not count toward the contract. We will see if any theaters say they refuse to play the film, but I kind of doubt it. Still, big news as we head into the fall season. That is, while films might not be delayed anymore, how they are released is very much in flux. And that is it for this week's episode of Box Office Receipts. Question for the episode is, how will you see Halloween Kills now that there are multiple options? Let me know on Facebook. Link to the pages in the show notes. Thank you for listening. See you next time.